What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today let's do a real world test between the Oppo Find N2 Flip versus the Galaxy Z Flip 4. And today I'm here at Epcot, so you know we're gonna have some great food. Of course, we're gonna take some pictures, and I've also partnered with Oppo to tell you about some of the future technologies that they're working on announced at MWC 2023. It's gonna be a fun day, let's do this. If you've never been to Disney's Epcot before, this is probably my favorite park. A lot of you ask me where this ball is every time I post it on social media, and that's here in this theme park. Right now, the Flower and Garden Festival is going on. Epcot has seasonal rotating festivals every year, but this is definitely one of my favorites. Everywhere is just so colorful and decorated with so many flowers. This year is for sure all about the succulents. These arrangements are incredible. There are characters at different spots to look at, also built with flowers, so these are really cool to see. There are picture opportunities also that give me a lot of choices for portraits, which I love. This is why I come here so much to do camera comparisons. In the back part of the park, there are replicas or representations of countries all over the world called World Showcase. So this makes for some amazing pictures. But the reason why I come here so much is because of the amazing food. The rotating festivals also brings new foods at all of these different countries. So it takes multiple days at this park just to try them all. Of course, I had to start with some coffee. I decided to go a little sweet, which I usually don't, but this was a key lime latte and it was really good. I actually finished all of it. The first place that we had to stop at is Morocco. This is one of the most detailed pavilions at Epcot. It is amazing. We ended up getting the trio of hummus, which was really interesting. The red one had beets in it and it was really tasty. Next, we went to the Japan Pavilion, which is really close. That's another one of my favorite places to stop by. The flip form factor makes it so easy to put it down on a table and grab selfies on our little day date. My wife grabbed the frushi, which is a fruit sushi. Very interesting, but a staple of this festival. And I got the creamy shrimp udon, which was really good. I highly recommend it if you stop by. When we first got there, it was very calm and the lines weren't too long, but just in a couple of hours, it got completely jammed and the lines were super long. So we stopped at one more place and got the avocado toast, which looked really pretty for a picture. And let me know which one you think took the most appetizing picture. And I also grabbed the shrimp and grits. Always a must when I see it on any menu. Let me know if you do the same. Using the Oppo Find N2 Flip is a familiar experience since I've used the Galaxy Z Flip 4 now for a while off and on. The size is almost identical, but there are two big things to me that make a huge difference on everyday use. First one is the obvious one, the cover screen. It is so much bigger on the Oppo Find N2 Flip and it's just so much easier to use. You can see the full preview of what your shot is going to look like, so it doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal. This is a much more practical cover screen setup, so I'm sure other manufacturers will be supersizing their cover displays very soon. Now don't get me wrong, the Galaxy Z Flip 4 also works fine and you can see a crop preview to frame your shot, but you're only seeing a very small portion. You'll have to open the device to see what your full image looks like after you take the photo. Another big difference to everyday use is the inner display itself. They are both very crisp and about the same resolution, so I don't think you'll be disappointed with either. The Oppo N2 Flip's display is slightly bigger and it's brighter with a 1600 nit peak brightness versus Samsung's 1200 nit peak brightness, so that's something to consider. But the difference for me in everyday use lies in the crease in the center. While you can see both of them, if you really look, the Samsung's is more pronounced and the groove is deeper. It is much less noticeable on the Oppo Find N2 Flip. When the screen is on, it's hard to see the crease, so I think this makes it more enticing for the user that might be afraid of this. Both of the hinges are very solid and work very well, but Samsung's hinge feels stiff and does allow for more angles towards the end of the fold, where the Oppo has a more spring-loaded effect towards the end of the fold, so that would be personal preference. But take a look at Oppo's new Flexion hinge. It allows the phone to close completely flat, while Samsung's hinge has quite a bit of a gap, so that is a big difference. Take a look at that. Oppo's drive to push technology further is definitely seen in the smartphone, but they are also innovating in so many other categories. At Mobile World Congress this year, Oppo showed off some amazing tech that they are working on. The first thing that caught my eye was the Oppo 45 watt liquid cooler. This can drop the temperature up to 13 degrees Celsius in smartphones, which is a big deal. I can see this being huge for the competitive mobile gaming market. And what's great is that you can use this in tablets and laptops as well, so this is something that I'm definitely excited about. I can't wait to see it. The second one I love is the Zero Power Tag. This will give you the power of a smart tracker with precision finding and location services all without the need of a battery, so no more switching out batteries every couple of months. 
This approach is better for the environment, less battery waste, which is in line with Oppo's goal to be carbon neutral in its operation by 2050. It is a little bigger than other trackers with batteries, but I'm cool with that. The zero power tag harvests signals that are commonly around us like RF signals to make this work, so I think this is going to be amazing. And this next one is a piece of tech that I'm looking forward to the most, the Oppo Air Glass 2. These are AR glasses that are super light and they look more like everyday glasses. For the tech enthusiasts like myself, I can see these being useful for navigation and notifications. The teleprompter mode also seems interesting for business. But I love the fact that this could change the way that people with hearing deficits interact with the world. I can see speech to text giving new life to the impaired, and I can always get behind technology that can change the world. So if you want to see more of what Oppo is doing in terms of innovation, check out the link below in the description. They are working on everything including the smart home with the Oppo Wi-Fi 6 router AX5400. The design is unique, very unconventional as a router, but that's what I appreciate about it. And I love the fact that Oppo is thinking of all their products as an ecosystem to tie it all together. Very cool stuff. We went around and took a few more photos before picking up the kids from school. Let me know what you think. They both have different approaches for sure. I had to try out the 50 megapixel mode on the Oppo Find 2 Flip. The Galaxy Z Flip 4 doesn't have a high res mode on it. The 12 megapixel mode on it does well, but you can see that the Oppo is preserving some more details when cropped in heavily. The colors are different and the contrast can go back and forth between the two. Saturation can also differ, but I think this will be personal preference. I also forgot that we got the bison ribeye with the red wine butter sauce and it was the best thing that I had that day. Okay, so let's bring it back with the battery life check. Both of these phones started with 70% charge this morning before going out to Epcot. This will be the second day of use. I did not charge them last night. I took more video on the Oppo Find N2 Flip and it still has more battery life by 5% because it has a larger 4,300 milliamp hour battery in comparison to the 3,700 milliamp hour battery on the Samsung, so that is something to keep in mind. And it also has faster charging with 44 watt wire charging that gives you back 50% juice in 23 minutes, where the Galaxy Z Flip 4 has 25 watt wire charging that is slower, but the Galaxy Z Flip 4 does have wireless charging where the Oppo does not but the Oppo does come with a fast charger in the box, so you have to choose what's important to you. That night after we picked up the kids, we went out with some friends to a local brewery and had some dinner. This gave me a chance to also to take some nighttime photos to see how these phones perform in low light. The kids afterwards went to have some ice cream nearby, but this is the reason to have one of these foldable devices. You can leave the phones on a table and just use the hand gesture to trigger the shutter. You don't have to ask anyone to take your photo for you or be out of luck to get a group picture. Even the kids were loving this and taking selfies. It's fun for the entire family. We had too much fun that night, so I didn't get enough low light images. So the next day we decided to go to Disney's Polynesian Resort. We went a little early. The kids played in the green space outside. And of course, my daughter learned how to take her own selfies. She became a pro at it. Just in case you were wondering, this is what the selfies look like with the cameras from the inner screen. All the ones that I've showed you so far were taken from the main sensors. They again have different approaches, so you'll have to choose the one that you like more. The sun was setting, the lighting was perfect outside, so I wanted to take a few more pictures. Here is a shot with the main lens, and I think they both look fantastic. Great color replication and skin tones. Here is a portrait picture, and this is my favorite picture that I took that night. It looks fantastic. So for dinner, we ended up at Kona Grill. This is a great place to pop in for some sushi. I had to get the spicy tuna that is a must every time. The shrimp tempura roll with avocado was also a good choice. Can't go wrong there. For the entree, we went with the airline chicken, and this was surprisingly good. What a weird name, because most chicken on airlines tastes like garbage, so that's what I was expecting. Took a few more shots inside of the hotel because this Polynesian-themed lobby has some cool things to take photos of. Also, I like to test skin tones when the lighting gets challenging. This is one of the biggest differences that I look for when testing smartphone cameras. Then it was time to get some Dole Whip, which is a pineapple soft serve. If you have never had this before, you definitely should. This is without night mode. And then this is with night mode. You can see again, they do have different approaches to the color of the Dole Whip. It is a lime color. Here are a few more portrait shots from the main sensor. You can see what it looks like with skin and color tones under harsh lighting. I do have to say I'm impressed with both of their portrait modes. The background separation and subject cutouts look nice. Here is a nighttime group photo with the main sensor again using that hand gesture to trigger the shutter. Here is an ultra wide angle shot of our group photo. I really like this one. 
I was trying to get some solid nighttime video to test out. It hasn't rained in about a month in Florida, but the night that I go out to actually test cameras, it starts pouring it down. It stayed like this for hours, but you can actually see a clear difference on sharpness on the video. Look at the water here and the trees. The detail level is amazing on the Oppo Find N2 Flip, but the Samsung's footage does look more steady. You can really see it here in this scenario. Look at the building. It's pretty muddy on the Samsung while it's looking notably sharper on the Oppo. So nighttime video is a go on the Find N2 Flip. I did give up after a while though. I went back to the car, then I drove up to get the family so they wouldn't get wet, but we needed to get them home in time. It was a school night. The kids absolutely love it when I have to do a camera test. Thank you for joining me on my real world test of these two phones. Here is how the battery test ended after the two days of using them. The Oppo did come out on top of the battery test in the two days of off and on usage with a lot of picture taking. So let me know which foldable that you would rather put in your pocket and which one that you think did better in the comment section below. My conclusion is I am glad that Oppo made the Find N2 Flip. While software improvements can make it a better experience, it is already such a good foldable and giving the Samsung competition that they absolutely need. This is only going to push this category further and I'm all for it and I want to thank Oppo for partnering with me and making this video possible and I will see you guys in the next video.